Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m. Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this episode, you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. So why not hang with us in the lobby as we discuss Hotel California by the Eagles? Stay tuned. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Coover share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. You have found us. I'm Dean here with Eric. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. You're, you're sweating. I'm sweating. <laughs> it's hot. It is hot. Yes. I feel like uh very steamy. I feel like Dustin Hoffman and Dick Tracy was he was 88 keys and there was <laughs> and they were trying to get the information out of him and he was That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Big boy did it. Big boy did it. <laughs> yes. So that that's what I feel like. If you don't know oh what I'm talking God. about, go go see Dick Tracy and uh, Dustin Hoffman. Now as a you got me anyway. going. See, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be laughing throughout the whole thing now. See <laughs> see what you did. See what you did. All right. <laughs> anyway, normally this would be the place where we plug the social media stuff, but we got exciting news for this episode. Um, as of the recording of this episode, we have launched uh, some some extra content. So above and beyond uh, the the wonderful stuff we talk about here. We also have something called a 3324 quick hit. And what that is, is just a really small tidbit of, of a nugget of information, maybe some behind the scenes about, about usually a music subject and a film subject, not longer than 10 minutes or so, just some extra stuff, content that will be released every Monday to feed the need for yeah. entertainment information. So for all the... All of those who are just feeling that drought during the week. That's it. You know, you don't, you don't want to, you know, you're just waiting to hear our voices again. If you're parched, uh, if, you're parched <laughs> if you're parched for content, <laughs> we're going to provide just a little bit. It's just there, a tease. Just so a little tidbit, so yeah. It is not another full episode. Our, our full episodes will always be our full episodes. They're not going anywhere. This is some supplemental uh, stuff to kind of tie you over. Like Eric said, wet, wet the appetite. <laughs> Get you ready for is, our, First one our, is great. It's about Barry Gibb. Uh, <laughs> guys, check it out. It's awesome. Um, Dean did a great job with it. I, I you know, can't well, say enough you. about this man. Well, thank he you. Is, he is, Old. you know. Whatever you're saying, it's because it's true. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> either I'll, leave, way. I'll, leave it, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm, I'll, take, I'll take it either way. <laughs> right? Yeah. They say yep. no such thing as bad press. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let, let's, get, let's, get to, uh, let's get to work. Let's go yep. to work. So what yes, we're talking sir. about in this episode is an album uh, by, it's not by The Eagles. That's right. The name of the band, everybody, we all call it The Eagles, like The Beatles and The Who and The This or That. Yes. Uh, they're actually just known as Eagles, which is uncomfortable to say. It I'll be very, honest it, with you. It very much is. It, I, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was actually thinking of things to say, and I was like, and I kept, I kept, I kept you know, Eagles, Eagles. Yeah. And I, got to, and I said, we got to point this out because that is the but, name of the But you can't do it. I, I, I defy you know? any, I will, I will not get, I'm not even going to try. I was going to, I'm like, but it is so awkward to not have the word the in front of Eagles because That's Eagles right. is also, Eagle is a bird. So usually you talk about the <laughs> Eagle flew. <laughs> Yes. Uh, across the sky, the eagle yep. landed. It doesn't say eagle landed, eagle, you know, this, any other thing. So, um, and if, so, you yeah. don't be, if you don't believe us, check out their documentary. I believe it's still on Netflix. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So that it's well, like a three hour, just, three and a half hour plus documentary. I think Glenn <laughs> Fry pretty much drove the point home with his stern <laughs> his face. Eagles. We are eagles, not the, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's a tough nut to yeah. crack. I gotta be honest. It's, it's the, you know, you, you, we want to have good grammar, so we say the. We don't just say eagles. That's right. But you don't say the white snake. You say white snake. Yes. Right. Or yes. So, 
So why you know? is the why is Eagles? Ha- why do we have such a problem with Eagles putting the in front of it? Like we can't not do it. We don't say the White Snake. <laughs> I don't know, right? And you know, you we think we'd be tipped off because every one of their albums is just, just says Eagles. Eagles. It, it's not the right, and yeah, it's it's never it's never written that way. Well, maybe that's not true. I think back in the day they might have they might have done that See? in like yeah, articles and such. But I I don't know. We're already but, dropping. Uh, bombs of of detailed information we're gonna say, this way if you ever meet any of them you can don't you don't get them angry um anyway the album that we're talking about so we know at this point we're talking about eagles mm-hmm. eagles uh the album we're, we're talking about is actually a request from a listener i was at a bbq and uh i was sitting with somebody i i uh, i'm not gonna mention her name just in case she doesn't want me to so they're like oh what are you what are you doing next bah, bah, bah. or are you gonna do eagles and I said, yeah. And she's like, and she kind of leaned back and it's kind of like, well, you know, kind of like listening to, as to what one. And for okay. me on, on our list or on my list or anytime I email Eric about it, usually I, I on my list was lo- the long run. Like for okay. me, I always like the long run was like, is like my favorite Eagles album. Mm-hmm. Um, but she kind of nodded and she's like, and- I said, Hotel California. She goes, yeah. <laughs> all right we'll do it so well, this is go. this is for uh this is our first listener request so we're doing eagles hotel california which is a pleasure to do anyway anything of by course. eagles is fine mm-hmm. it's 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 gorgeous this is a gorgeous album we will be talking about the long run i mean yeah we'll bring it up yeah Just, and we can't know, not we'll, we'll throw in, you in, the bone there and speaking well thanks <laughs> we'll yeah. talk about that one and eric won't hit record he'll be like well we didn't get it sorry next yeah. time <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's jump in let's talk about the stats we'll get you set up with all that detailed information that we like to throw around at the beginning this was released in december of 1976 produced by bill simzik hit number one on the charts this album is just a i i mean who i don't know what it's gonna sound like we're gushing but these are facts here it is mm-hmm. you know hit number one on the charts uh won two grammy awards record of the year and then uh, New Kid in Town won for a uh, vocal arrangement. Mm. There were three singles from this album released. Hotel California hit number one. New Kid in Town hit number one. Life in the Fast Lane hit double one, hit number 11. So it hit one twice. It went 26 times platinum mm. and sold 32. That's 26 million and then 32 million worldwide. So absolute beast. This is a beast of an album. Yep. The Eagles have a t- total combined record sales of 200 million copies because their volume one of their greatest hits is actually was actually one of the biggest selling albums of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it eclipsed yeah. Michael Jackson. It actually eclipsed Thriller. And then when Michael Jackson passed away, that you know Thriller saw a surge in yeah. sales and it, and it passed it again. So this is really up there. Uh, 1998 Hall of Fame inductees. Yeah. Right? Uh, made a big, strong... Uh, they were... Uh, well... Uh, well, well, I'm not going to go there yet, you know, no? but uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> Made a strong comeback in the 90s, but we'll get to Oh, that. yeah, they absolutely you know, did. Some, but yeah. yeah uh, and yeah. Uh, formed in 1971. So this is a, their 50th anniversary, actually. Of uh, yeah. No. Yeah, 50th anniversary. That's right. Of, of Eagles. Uh, they were originally, here's a little bit tid, tidbit of trivia, um, really started out the, the genesis or the germ of Eagles started out as Linda Ronstadt's backing band. So we talk uh, in, we've talked in some other episodes about that California sound. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the, uh, the, tr- the Trinity, the California sound Trinity, which is Eagles, Linda Ronstadt and Fleetwood Mac. And here, here you have it. Here's, yeah. they literally sprang from Linda Ronstadt mm-hmm. and her, her biggest hit, you know, one of her big hits was an Eagle song was Desperado. It was more known at the time. Linda Ronstadt's version than it was the the Eagles version. Eagles was version was a minor hit. Hers was the the version that was really known. Yeah, these guys were uh, big, uh, also good friends with, with the likes of Jackson Brown. Uh, another musician named J.D. Souther was was a, was a frequent collaborator on the especially on the early stuff. Uh, so yeah, they were they were kind of just hanging together at that at that point. The Sort of what was it the uh, Beverly Hills the, the the Rodeo not Rodeo Drive but like the hill hillside they would all hang out on the hill there and you know and just and just listen to each other's music and, and I know I know I know Jackson Brown was a big uh, help to Glenn Fry in the yeah early they were years living and, together yeah yeah uh, they and lived he was together for a while so yeah a lot of uh, kind of uh, 
the, the, the training or the proving grounds for a lot of these artists. J.D. Souther, known as a, a prolific songwriter, he, yeah. he's written songs for you know, like one of Linda Ronstadt's favorite songwriters, collaborated a lot with, with Glenn Fry. I believe they even may have asked him early on to join the Eagles. And I think Bernie Ledden or, or someone didn't really care for him too much. Mm. Um, so he was originally asked. So he, he's been there from the, from the jump. So while somebody, we're talking about, you mean lineups, somebody else had a say besides Don Henley and Glenn Frey? <laughs> somebody no, actually I, had a voice. In the, <laughs> I don't, we'll the time, get to that. We'll get to at that. At the time. But. Yeah. At the time, probably it was, it was yeah. a little more democratic. Um, <laughs> this lineup the, the lineup for Hotel California is a kind of one in and one in and one on the way out version of the Eagles. Yeah. So it, you had Glenn Fry, uh, Don Henley, Don Felder, who joined actually a couple of albums in. So he yeah. was not an original member. He's but not he's an original member. Right. Yep. Uh, it was a Joe Walsh. Mm -hmm. So Joe Walsh, we'll, we'll talk about him in a moment. And then Randy Meisner. So what what's missing from this is uh, founding member Bernie Ledden who was really responsible for that, the, 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 the more country sound, yeah. you know, because Eagles were firmly in really kind of a country thing. They were played very heavily on country radios. As, as a matter of fact, Henley and Fry were looking to develop a harder rock sound and that didn't really jive with, with Bernie Led and what he was doing. So he exited Randy Meisner, who was the bass player for Eagles. He would leave after this album. So basically to within the space of two albums to, uh, to, Founding members would leave. And yeah. then um, you you want hard rock. You know, you go to the cantina and you find the mercenary and you get Joe Walsh, right? That's you, right. Like, you know, you're not <laughs> going to get much harder than that. And, and there was some concern from Don Henley that this guy might be too much of a maniac for even for the Eagles. Well, that's right. He was already in. A, he was already established. I mean, he yeah. had his own band, the James Gang, and, which is pretty uh, weird. And and, yeah. he, and he had a prolific solo career as well. It, yeah, it, on, it's it is odd that they would they would you know ask him to be in this band. I mean, he's he was already, he really didn't. I mean, he was already he already had some hits. Not, I wouldn't say they were great, big big hits, but they were. Uh, yeah, James Gang had walk hit, away and it's nonetheless, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, he was um, he was a force to be reckoned with, but they were yeah. a little worried because he at the time he had a reputation as just off the wall. Yeah. Hell like, of a guitar like player. Really? Yeah. Uh, oh God, a good a, a gunslinger when it comes mm -hmm. to playing guitar. So that was the hard edge that they were looking for. Yeah. Uh and Joe Walsh accepted. So this is the first appearance of Joe Walsh uh in the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And he became just an iconic member of the band, especially on, on this album. So that was the thing is they wanted that hard, that harder edge. So yeah, you, you had some, some personnel changes going on here with, with Bernie Ledden, more of the banjo and more of the, the country kind of stuff that influenced exiting and then moving forward with a harder, a harder edge. That's right. And when was the first time that you heard the album? What was your experience? Oh, I, I can't tell you the first time I heard hotel california but i remember mm. the i remember eagles on the radio from way back from when uh, i was a course. kid like yeah, like take it easy and, and lion eyes again my, my parents were were big into country music so i may have even heard it there first because it was something okay. that was back then they were they were really had a, a foot in both in in pop rock you know they were kind of southern they weren't they're kind of southern rock they were kind of country-ish yeah. um they, they they walked in a lot of different sets of shoes that's right. My, my experience was, you know, yeah, I knew those songs as well. I didn't know they were the same band because it was so different. Yeah. You know, Hotel California came around and it was actually, it's kind of funny because during that period, it was just like um, late 76, early 77. And uh, I swore up and down that there, there were two songs that I, that I, at that point, when I first heard them on the radio, that they were my absolute favorite songs of all time. <laughs> but the first song was, was uh, Al Stewart's Year of the Cat. Mm -hmm. I just absolutely love that song. I, you know, I, I was always looking for you know, to hear it on the radio. I love that song as well. Yeah, it, it's 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 great. And then and then Hotel California. I mean, the single came out. They started playing it heavily in, the, in early 77. And then I heard that and I was like, oh, my God, this is even better. And I swore you know, like, again, it's just it's epic. It is absolutely epic. And I just to this day, it still it still works. I mean, it, it doesn't go away. I mean, of course, it's not my favorite song of all time anymore, but it's up there. I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, it's definitely still floating around. But uh, but yeah, I just that was that was such a great, great experience of, of and then and then knowing that uh, and realizing this was the same band. No way. How could they go from this to this? It was yeah. just, you know, such a 
such a contrast, you know? Yeah. And, and so, another one of those, uh, what epitomizes the California sound is those harmonies and, and the yeah, Eagles oh, had it. Yeah. You know, they yeah. had it with, with Glenn Fry and, and Don Henley. Oh, and then, and then Randy Meisner, who kind of really had the high end of stuff known for, for the song, take it to the limit. So, um, that, that's pretty much his claim to fame. Good with Lord. Eagles. The good Lord, the voice on that song is just, yeah. uh, you know, it gets you. But I remember, yeah, the story goes that Glenn Johns, a famous British uh, producer, when he first started producing, like he produced like the first couple albums of, the, of theirs. And he wasn't really all that impressed with the band itself when they were just kind of like tooling around and playing. But when he heard those harmonies, he goes, that's the hook. That's it right there. This is what this band's about. Yeah, you know? that's so the sauce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would, I mean, I would definitely put their harmonies up against the Beatles, uh, the Beach Boys in any day. Oh, yeah. And just, put them in I, their, mean, they're, know, they're, I mean, come on. I mean, sometimes even, I think I even like the uh, Eagles better, uh, some of their stuff, because it's just, you can just, you know, you, there's such a distinctive high end harmony, but you can pick out each voice. You can know. You know exactly who's singing what, and and it's very very well constructed. Yeah. You know, whereas it's certainly you know like the Beach Boys have that sort of rich harmony, and it's 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 almost like one sound, one voice in, mm-hmm. in a way. If you th- you know, if I don't know what I'm talking about, but like and and then the in the Beatles, kind of the same thing, but also in the later stuff you could kind of differentiate, but in the mono in the mono era, you know their stuff was just kind of like it was hard to distinguish, but. Mm-hmm. Here, Eagles was warm. It was, it was, yeah, they're just fantastic, fabulous. Yeah, just, you know, and and just to set the story, the the, uh, album before this, Not Counting a Reader's Hits collection, was was one of these nights, which came out Mm. in 1975. That had three hits as well. It had one of these nights, Lion Eyes, and Take It to the Limit. So, yeah, uh, once once they got going, They, yeah. they really didn't stop. You know, Desperado might have been might have been their their lone clunker, which kind of didn't have much on it. Yeah. But once they got past that, it was it was really onward and upward. And they just had, would have album after album with multiple hits and multiple it's uh, tough. classic rock radio stuff. I mean, you know, there's just so much yeah. there. It's tough because they have there, there are so many hits. It's, it's really tough to not to just pick one album. Above, I mean, I I guess you can. I mean, Hotel California might be the album by default because it's just such a great. Oh yeah, great, it's great album, and there's a there's a lot of yeah. great stuff on here. But but the fact that some of the older stuff had so many hits, it's it's just hard to kind of just. You just want to go back and listen to them th- that stuff too. You know, it's yeah. like you, you know, and it's got a different sound. This is yeah, this is definitely absolutely. a, a yeah. you know, uh, Hotel California is kind of a a a, a harder edge to it. Uh, more cynical th- than some of the other ones. It is yeah. a loose concept album. It is kind of a little about about, about loss of innocence and and mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. So there is some some kind of melancholy feelings to it, uh, yeah. as well. So and one of the great things about the Eagles is if you look at the credits on on pretty much all their albums, it's a collaborative effort. So mm-hmm. when you look at something like Fleetwood Mac, it's like Stevie Nicks sings the song, she wrote it. Christine mm-hmm. McVie sings the song. She wrote it. Yeah. With the Eagles, it's like Glenn Fry, J.D. Souther, Don Henley, three people writing writing the song, and then and then usually whoever has the idea will will sing the lead. But song after song, it's pretty much a collaborative effort of of constructing these tunes and putting them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Once we go, I guess we're going through track by track. Are yeah, we, pretty much. Going? Yeah. Okay. So I think so. Um, yeah. So let's let's <laughs> let's dive in. Let's do this. Yeah. Just know, just so one other thing of of note is, you know, with the addition of Joe Walsh, and this was kind of interesting as well, is previous to this, you had three vocalists. You had Glenn Fry, Don Henley, and Randy Meisner. Mm -hmm. Adding Joe Walsh adds a fourth vocalist because Joe Walsh sings and and puts out solo albums. He doesn't do instrumental stuff. Yeah, Uh, He's he's an artist in his own right. So now you just added a fourth voice or fourth, fourth point of view another distinctive so voice for the for another distinctive matter. voice it, yeah. it, you know it was already getting crowded and I, I think that could you know also lead to some issues down the road is is yep. you know there's that saying you know too many chefs so there there's that to consider as well mm-hmm. but yeah. one one other yeah let's let's get into it um we'll we'll go track by track for the most part we'll roll through it and and it opens with the album hotel california opens with guess what opens with hotel california 
Hotel California. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wasn't where are you going tr- with this? Was a trick question? Uh, is this a trick question? Like, I, I wasn't trying to pull one Acoustic guitar. On you. <laughs> it opens with a song. Yes. <laughs> no, it, was, it opens with Hotel California. A classic among classics. I mean, this, oh, uh, this song is just, in the, and I think it's in the pantheon, and it's definitely in, in got to be in the top charts of uh, a top list of greatest songs of all time. I mean, this is the one that that defined the Eagles. It's epic in scale. It's got everything. The slow, uh, the slow build of it is what gets me. It's like this long guitar intro, then it kicks in with the drums, and then Henley, you know, comes in with his vocal. Yeah, and you have um, a story to it, and, and there's a story, and and it just, you know. And, and and with each chorus part, it just, just it's, it gets wider and broader and more l- and louder, if, if you, you know, even too. Like the, the more of the rock feel starts to creep in as well. And so of course, by the end of it, you're just kind of like you're lost in that lo- in that long guitar outro. Right. It just it sort of fades out. And it's, it's I had never heard guitars harmonize with one another so so eloquently like like they like they do on this album between yeah. walsh and felder it's yeah i think fantastic I think, I think with this first song you pretty much know that it's something di- it's going to be something different here mm-hmm. uh yeah and we talk a lot about joe walsh but don felder is no slouch at the guitar his nickname Absolutely is fingers not. Mm-hmm. so <laughs> and, and that should tell you they he was he is uh technically proficient uh knows what he's doing and is a skilled songwriter and, and had a hand in in, in constructing all this uh, especially this song which is really important. If you look at the, you know, there's the the video of them playing this live. And at the end, yeah, they're just double Walsh and Felder are doubling each other with the solos at the end. Absolutely incredible. It's just like, it doesn't get better than that. Watch yeah. what, you know, they're not having a guitar duel. They're, they're playing the same solo. No, it's, at the they're they're harmonized. They're, they're, they're yeah. voices. The guitars are voices. And it's, it's like, it's adding, you know, two more voices to the vocals. If you, if, you know, if you, you want to say that, I mean, it just, yeah, I mean, and it's not, and that's, it cannot be easy to do, to play in a different, slightly different key when you're actually harmonizing with one another, playing this basically the same phrasing and the same notes, but yeah, but in a different key. And it's just, you know, to get it so perfect is, is yeah, it's absolutely just a, amazing. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing to listen to. It's even more amazing to watch it when, yeah. in, in that there, there's some concert footage from that era or from the tour not recent stuff, but back then. And it's just absolutely amazing to watch these guys just go at it, collaborating and, and they're, they're giving each other looks, they're smiling, they're yeah. digging it. And, and it's just something amazing. This is like one of those epic songs that really defined uh, Eagles, the Eagles legend. And it, like I said, it went to number one. So this was, this really was a, a shot across the bow, uh, which leads to the second song, which was another shot across the bow, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is uh, new kid in town. Yeah which is odd. It's light. It's breezy. It's, it's not as hard. It's, um, and this is something that I always, I always, uh, found very odd about Glenn Fry and his, you know, cause he, you know, he, I never realized that he was like the rock and roll guy. Like he was always talking about, I'm into rock and roll and this, mm-hmm. and this. you really don't get that impression. You know, with the early stuff, he's, he's always singing these light, like sort of, yeah. Like, peaceful Ballads easy and feeling and these, yeah these like these and very, sunrise very country and he even <laughs> yeah. has the even has the country twang like yeah you know like the voice like it like a singing voice i'm talking about not even yeah. like a talking voice but and he hails from detroit michigan <laughs> yep so it's, it's it's odd to me that he would be you know the most one of the most country of 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 the of the band besides bernie ledden like he would you know he was always doing the more acoustic stuff so where is this rock and roll uh, guy that you're talking about but what you don't realize is that he he wrote you know sometimes he didn't he the, the sort of the especially on this album some of the rocking stuff he had a hand in writing but he didn't sing yeah now because you know, with with new kid in town he sings this one so it's more i guess more his idea like you said uh but yeah it's 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 a great tune you oh, know God, it, I, <laughs> I love this song there's oh yeah just, it's got it it starts with his solo vocal and then do, listening to it recently you can really, I really came to appreciate Don Henley ghosting him yes. on, on the second Harmony. parts of the verses, just very lightly there. And then sometimes going a little higher. I'm like, God, the harmony there. It, God, it does, this is, voice. you know, this is yeah. an amazing. So now, yep. now I do have a, a question or two questions. Mm-hmm. Where the hell is Glenn Fry after this song? <laughs> He's gone. Did he punch out? Did he go to lunch? Because this is the only yeah. song he sings on. And I, That's you know, right. 
you know, it, it's, it was kind of weird. I was looking, I'm like, yeah, wow. It's like Don, Hen- like nine songs. Don Henley's got you know, five of them. Yeah. Well, well I, I wanted, I'm going to comment on that as we go along with some okay. of the songs. So yeah, but uh, yeah, Henley, he has, he has the most, he sings the lead on most of the songs yeah, here, which yeah, is an, much. which is an odd choice. Yeah. Especially so, when we get to the next song. Well, hang on. I gotta, I gotta okay. ask you another question before. Okay. We go. I'm sorry. Before we jump off of this, uh, this ped- pedestal we're on. <laughs> are you i'm going to ask you a question are you team henley or team fry <laughs> i love you didn't know both. you didn't know i was going to ask this i'm putting them on the well, spot but i'm not surprised you 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 are because uh <laughs> you know I, I i you know i was gonna not ask you this but i know it was going to come up in the conversation okay, but, I see that. um uh i'm team henley I, really? I've always admired don henley i really? always admired his songwriting i love yeah. his voice he was i vote he i'm something you know i'm a sort of a frustrated singer <laughs> it's just like i'm a frustrated drummer so yeah i admired you know he has a a way of of really writing gorgeous he can write a really great love song mm-hmm. or a love song about breaking up like on this album but he's also extremely uh, i wouldn't say cynical but yeah, he knows i would but, he, <laughs> but but no he has a, he has a, you know, i don't mean that in a bad way i don't mean that in a bad way no it's to me it's more he, he writes songs that are cautionary tales yeah. Right. He he's sort okay. of like like America, like watch out, you know, there's you know, the downfall of this, the sure. downfall of that, the troubles, the pitfalls, all that kind of stuff. He's very, very cautious. Cautiously optimistic may not be the best, the, you know, but I think more he, just cautious. <laughs> yeah. He just he just knows how to write those kinds yeah. of songs about loss and about, you know, uh, the, yeah. the struggles and and I've always admired even in his solo work. Um so but and Glenn Fry's is sort of like he's like he he goes, you know, he's very he's very more straightforward in his songs, like love songs and that kind of thing. But, I'm, uh, I'm, but no, I'm, te- I'm, not, I'm team fry. I'm team fry. I'm not so, surprised. It's it's no surprise that we we picked, <laughs> you know, because I, really? I, I thought I, for sure you were going to say Glenn Fry. I love, if you I love had, him. If you had asked, no, if you I, had asked me to write it down, I would have wrote Glenn Fry. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I for some reason, but. Uh, no, Henley always, yeah, he always, yeah, he always, uh, yeah, not to diminish he, Henley. I'm not, it's not like no. I'm anti Henley. It's just, and I'm not diminishing Fry. He's, yeah, I just love both, Glenn Fry's they're voice. Both fans, and the fact that they work together, yes, and that they are the certified at this point, no disputing that they pretty much are the certified leaders of this, of this band. Yep. Um, it's becoming less and less of a, <laughs> a democratic thing. Yes. As we get um, closer to, to th- the that's end. right. That's so, right. Yeah, so let's so, move. Okay. So now let's move to life in the fast lane. Yeah. Uh, the title was inspired by a conversation that uh, Glenn Fry had with his drug dealer at the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> Driving in a Corvette. Put, put it, we'll on, put it right on. out there. I mean, this is, you know, this is what now was the, going on. Now, back the, then. now the question is, is he, was he going to a drug deal? Oh, I don't know. He Glenn Fry was driving around with him. him. Okay. I, I, I was, probably, I was like, why is he in out. a car with a drug deal? <laughs> Yeah, I'm really just hung you know, out. Like I'm sure okay. that they, it wasn't like, oh, this was like some undercover thing. Again, we we talked about Tusk recently yeah. and, and the amount of cocaine that was used then. Oh, and, sure. And yeah, it's, it's just, it was just it, it was in the it was in the the society. It was like the drug of choice. Of course. So Makes I'm sense. sure they weren't like a dealer dealer. They were more like a guy that that gets things. Yeah. You know. So uh, so yeah, life in the fast lane. You, you really get a nice riff in there by Joe Walsh. He came up with that. He came out with the riff. Yes. Yeah. And I will add that this is joe walsh for me this uh, they should have let him sing this song think so i think henley should have stepped aside this screams joe walsh this entire song feels like a joe walsh uh-huh. something he had done before with james gang it, it has that sound and because of that strong riff yeah and i really feel like he you know, and I've, I've heard him do it i've seen him live i've he opened for stevie nicks and on her at radio city at the wild heart tour in 83 he did the song so he could sing it you know, there's no, no, no problem there. He has the voice for it. So why, you know, like, I feel yeah, like almost this like is a, more in his wheelhouse. Why yeah. wouldn't they let him sing? the yeah, lead It's, it's this, almost like a companion. Know? It's almost like a companion yeah. song to life's been good. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, no, kind of I, like, in that, I, that, that, that's that what I'm talking of, about. You know, yeah. That's it's what I'm talking about. It has that, it has that classic Joe Walsh that because of that heavy riff, yeah. it has that classic sound that he, this is, this is perfect for him. Why wouldn't they let him sing it? I don't you know. know? So it's, it's kind of odd to me, but you well, know, you can't give him the keys to the kingdom. I mean, you got to bring him in, you know, you yeah, bring but, him in slowly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, one, the fact that, he, you know, true, but I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's because he was an already an established artist. So whatever, but I just feel like 
this is so much in his wheelhouse. This is yeah. like, it's like him all over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. I mean, so far what we've got on the first side, it, we've only, there's only four songs on the first side and the first three were the singles and two of them went to number one. Yeah. So you're already <laughs> in, in like, can't miss territory yeah. with this album. It's mm-hmm. just absolutely. And then, and then you get the beautiful and melancholy wasted time. Oh, it's my favorite. It, it is. It's just, it's so evocative. It just really just evokes some, some emotions and some feelings. His One vocal of, really, really, he really nails it. This is like, there are, yeah, there's three songs in this album that I could, uh, that I would say are, are my, fa- my three favorite songs. This is one of them. I've always loved singing this along with, you know, like anytime I'm in the car or, you know, I tried to do it at karaoke. They don't, fortunately, it's not one of those songs that are in the book. <laughs> of course, they only have the hits. So, you know, course, you gotta like, yeah. I gotta, I had to bring my own my own CD and I had to sing on top of Henley. So, which was kind of nice because I tried to harmonize with him and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, it, it didn't. Yeah. That was it kind of flubbed, but so I ended up singing <laughs> sort of double, you know, his, his vocal. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. And it, you know, now, you know, there's some things about it that kind of hit home and uh, so I won't go any further than that. But, yeah. It's just, you know, it's just got a, you know. yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice way to close out the the side. It just kind of, cause you've gotten, You've gotten really some different looks already with Hotel California. Like I said, New Kid in Town is a little more sedate. Life in the Fast Lane really up ups the ups the ante set by Hotel California. Very very riff oriented, mm-hmm. and then Wasted Time just kind of just kind of like like kind of floats over you, kind of comes over you. Yeah, the song. And it's, you know, it's primarily Henley too. There's very little harmony on this song until not until the very end. Where you know they they kind of it's not even spoken it's just like sort of a ooh you know they come in with the oohs and the ahs at the end yeah. it's just, and it, it's a beautiful way to close it out so but I would argue I mean this is more like a a Don Henley this would easily appear on any one of his solo records at some point yeah. you know like it's got he that would, feeling he would write songs like this you know in some of his solo work so yep. yeah yep that, so, yep well before we get to side two we're gonna stop here because I want to. Let you know that we're, there's a great podcast that we're collaborating with. They're called Invi- Imbibe the Vibe. I'm going to get it right. Imbibe the Vibe. Uh, and what they do is they take music and they pair it with cocktails. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to play you their promotion. Uh, and hopefully you'll check them out because they're really a great set of guys. I listen to their podcast and it's a really a lot of fun. So check that out. We'll be right back on the other side. Hey, this is Alex and Jackson from the Imbibe the Vibe podcast. It's a show where we take music, we take cocktails, and we put them together. And we also teach you how to make those fancy cocktails from scratch so you can do it at home. The same way you would pair a fine meal with an exquisite wine. We pair fine music with exquisite fancy cocktails. Listen to us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your pod. And remember, have fun out there. Have fun, why don't you? Side two begins the way side one ended. Mm-hmm. Just on a, on a little smaller note, it's a, it's a reprise of Wasted Time, which is kind of odd that yeah. you get, and it's only like a minute or so long. It, it feels like it should have kind of been with wasted time like it should have just been that should have been the whole song yeah i mean if you listen to it on vinyl it's, it appears that yeah, way but unlike on, on, I, I had to and i think the cassette it appears after after actually after the song if i'm not mistaken yeah because on, on the yeah. album it's it's side yeah, two vinyl, it opens side yeah, two it opens side two right yeah which is kind of strange because it's only like a minute like less than a minute and a half mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, and it doesn't lead, and, the, the, you know, the strange thing about it is the, the song that it leads into doesn't really kind of correlate or correspond with with the feeling of wasted time. It's Victim of Love, mm-hmm. which is just a straight-up dirty rocker. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I can think about. It is. It's just yes. really, it's really just, uh, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, the song Those Shoes on Long Run. Yes, so I yeah. guess that that I guess I guess what I should say is those shoes really kind of bit off this song because it really sounds a lot like it. Yeah, it uh, it, it it has that kind of chunky guitar and it's not a straightforward riff. It just kind of like and it leaves you wanting more like it, it, it'll it it'll stop and you know start and stop. And, you know, that kind of feel like and it just the split second, you know, little 
timing there is 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 great. And I think it was, this was Felder's, right? He he came up with that. Well, uh, yeah. There's a, well, there's a little bit of a story. Funny you yeah. should ask. Yes, <laughs> Don. You know, this was uh, Don Felder kind of really presented this song. Uh, he was supposed to do the vocal. They he wasn't he wasn't getting the vocal right. So uh, and this is where this is where the bad stuff starts. Is yeah. that you know they they kind of had to figure out a way to tell him. So they had the manager take Don Felder like out to lunch or do whatever. And while he was gone, Don Henley re-recorded the vocal. Oh, good. Yeah. God. <laughs> come on. Like yeah, he wasn't going to know. He, like pretty. he wasn't going to come back and hear that it wasn't his voice. Oh my um, God. Yeah. It just wasn't. He tried, he gave it multiple cracks at it and it just wasn't working, which happens sometimes. Sometimes you're just not getting the right feel. And, and you know, maybe Don Henley's hearing it differently. So, yeah, we got it. You know, they just didn't really have the heart, I guess. OK, well, let me ask you this then. I mean, it, like we let's go back to, you know, uh, Life in the Fast Lane with Joe Walsh. Now, mm-hmm. do you think Joe Walsh's voice is on par with Henley and Fry? No. I don't either. I don't See, think it's the, as strong. That's the thing. It's like, but well, it's Joe di- Walsh. It's a different kind of voice. It's a different it, kind of vocal. He gets to sing, but he's, you know, but uh, Don Felder, I've heard him sing and he's not... Not that bad. I mean, it's no, yeah, that song Heavy Metal from the Heavy Metal soundtrack. That's right. That's right. There was yeah, two songs so, called Heavy Metal on the Heavy Metal soundtrack, one by Sammy Hagar and one by Don Felder. Yes. Um, which he he kind of sounds like Don Henley a little bit. Yeah. He kind of has a Henley a Henley vibe in his vocals. That song Heavy Metal from the Heavy Metal soundtrack sounds perhaps, like Don Henley. Perhaps that's why, you know. I don't know. But it's So just- <laughs> maybe he's like, I I can do Don Don Henley was like, Well, if you're gonna sound like me, I'll just do it because I know what it like what it should be because he's got that he's got that very much a Henley sound. Who knows? But um, wasn't there some anim- animosity at this point between there was Zelda and Fry? I mean, I think I think it, that was I a little bit had... later on. I was I was going to get to that story. Yeah, yeah, about them on stage. But an- another thing about this song is is the Eagles were notoriously famous for editing, over overdubbing, and 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 kind of cutting in. You know, mm-hmm. not completing, a, not being able to kind of complete a song without a lot of edits and, and and piecing in and all that kind of stuff and overdubs. They they proudly proclaimed that for Victim of Love, the backing track was recorded completely live. They pulled it together and did it all in one shot. And then they added yeah. the vocals afterwards. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a little nod to that on the uh, on the original vinyl pressings. If you look on the inner groove, there's a little a little etching about that. That uh, that's right. Yes. V O L uh, five live or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Prim, you know, a little inside joke, but yeah. So then you get uh, Pretty Maids all in a row, which is Joe Walsh's debut. This is this song. is my second favorite. Yeah. Song. I love this song. Wow. So, I, ah. I thought it was going to be a tri- I thought it was going to be a Henley hat trick. All three Henley. No, I I this song I. I Again, it, it. I love Joe Walsh's ballads. I, I, I think I told yeah. you this. You know, with his this, the album he did with Jeff Lynne, one of his yep. later Analog albums. Man. There's a song on there that I absolutely love. I think it's something to do with family. I forget mm-hmm. the name of it, um, but it's again, it has that. I love his ballads. I, I just, but he's got the voice. The voice. His voice is not. It, he but doesn't it bell. He's not a belter. He it does it works though because yeah. he's got that sort of nasal like nasally yep. kind of want you know. But it works for his his songwriting and his sort of like yeah. He doesn't try and go outside of it. Yeah, feel good, fancy free kind of lifestyle. Like just yep. you know whatever you know. At this song, it has that kind of feel. Has that kind of I I'm not a great singer vibe. I'm 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 just I'm I'm letting you know how I feel. Like it's like, you know, and it just Yeah, he's he's perfectly service he's a perfectly serviceable vocalist. He's not yeah. a you know, an expert vocalist and he's not the worst vocalist in the world. He's Right. It, it, for Joe Walsh it it supports what he does with his guitar and and it's it's fine. But again, that slow build, that slow burn and it just it, it just gradually yeah. gets it's get louder and louder and then and, you know, the only thing I will say that I don't like in this song um is the drums. <laughs> I think it could have, <laughs> it's got that, that thudding drum sound, like, the t- 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 boom. you know, it just, it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. Cause it's mm-hmm. just, there's nothing else there yeah. at that moment, at that split second. And so it's kind of, you know, um, a lot of empty space, a lot of empty space. Right. And, and it just, cause the song is so slow. Yeah. I feel like it could have worked without any kind of real percussion per se. You really couldn't do a rim shot or anything else, but I guess, but uh, yeah, but Henley's snare there, it just doesn't doesn't work for me. It's just kind mm-hmm. of this, it's almost like he's hitting a box like Lindsay yeah. would do on Tusk. There you, you know, go. Like, <laughs> Get that Kleenex box <laughs> out. Kleenex box. Yeah. Call Lindsay um, Buckingham. But again, the, the, <laughs> but the, but by the time the, but the slide guitar in the middle, 
when he yeah. plays that little riff there. It, well, it, he's that, a virtuoso on it. That on gets the slide. you. That yeah. gets you. And it's and it's very atmospheric too. They recorded a lot of echo on that guitar right there. And as and and as the song fades out again, those harmonies come in. And especially, I don't know. I th- I'm pretty sure it's Henley. It could be Randy Meisner though, with that really high pitched ooh at at the very top there. I don't mm-hmm. know which is which you know for certain but uh but man yeah that gives me chills and and it's a it's it's a gorgeous little little tune i always i always i always loved it yeah it's, always, it just, you know, it's just, like a sleeper you know, hit you know yeah and it, and it proved that it was a smart decision to bring joe walsh in because he's bringing not only he's bringing his guitar prowess and if that's all he brought that would have been good because he would have just been a you know a one-for-one one replacement of bernie Ledden. but he's a he's a songwriter he's a singer yeah. So he can provide some extra stuff too. Again, it gets it got a little crowded <laughs> by this That's album right. with with yeah. all those people. But if he's going to bring quality stuff, then yeah, it wasn't filler. What you do get, which if there is one filler, it, it's going to be "Try and Love Again," which is Randy Meisner's kind of kind of his swan song because um, he yeah. would leave after this album. But no slouch of a song, though. No slouch of a song, though. Absolutely, very not. very well produced. Again, yeah. the harmonies are strong. To me, it sounds like. It doesn't. It sounds less of like Eagles, but more like something that he he would have uh, would go on to do with Poco, or yeah. with one of those groups at the time. Like those one of the one hit one like Firefall. It, it has that kind of like one hit. Yeah, I think wonder. it has more of the, the the classic Eagles influence to it. So I think it was still yeah. kind of grounded in in an album or two before. Yeah, you know, which yeah, is there's it, nothing wrong with. But he was still kind of in there. I don't think he was kind of embracing the the rock aesthetic that, that Henley and Fry were doing, which, which again, there's room enough for everybody. So, it, and it makes it diverse, mm-hmm. you know, and he, he would leave after this album just because he, he was not doing well physically mm-hmm. um, and then wasn't getting along. Also, he, he, he hated singing, take it to the limit. He really got tired <laughs> of singing that song. That's and right. it was his only one really. I mean, it's a fantastic song. I mean, God. it really is, but, but he was having, tr- he was having trouble hitting those high notes. Yeah. He was getting it's ulcers. Tough. He was getting, it just wasn't doing well. So, he would uh, he would exit, but try and love again is basically his swan song with the Eagles. He would not return. I think he did return maybe once in in one of their reunions, but after that, he he really did not return to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to close out the album is uh, the last resort, which and is this, another epic epic uh, Henley. And this uh, is song. my third favorite song <laughs> on the record. A beautiful way to end out the album. It's 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 long and epic. It's not as fast. As Hotel California, but you got those perfect bookends right there that, you know, that really this song is real about that, that Americana feel. It's it's, you know, I guess it, it, he's, it's talking about Native Americans, I'm sure. Um, but it's yeah, paradise and the paradise and how, you know, kind of, I, I think it I think it actually kind of parallels wasted time. Yeah. Just the way the way both the way both of these those songs close out their sides. Mm hmm. You know, kind of really just kind of puts you into a really both of them really kind of put you into a mood. If you sit there and you're listening to this whole album, you're going to get drawn in. Yeah, is what's going to happen. Sure. And again, I mean, these songs are so strong that I mean, it's with just three singles off the it's it's amazing to me that none of these other songs became hits. I mean, I guess you know, wasted time. I mean, come on, it was it was the B side of 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 what Life in the Fast Lane, I think, or or yeah. I don't know. But I mean, but it, they amazing definitely played me. on, on classic rock radio. I think the like wasted time in uh, victim of love, victim of love. I've heard, I've never yeah, heard, definitely heard like, that on classic. I've never rock heard radio. like stuff like, you know, uh, pretty maids all in no. a row or I would have thought even, well, even uh, try and love again to me. It's it, like I said, it has that, that sort of like, you know, soft rock feel like that, that all these songs that are being played at it's, to me, it's just as good. Yeah, as anything like that, Firefall did, or any of these other songs. So I'm, I'm, again, surprising that it, it didn't get the you know, the airplay that I feel this whole album really deserves. You know, I think every oh, song is you know. Oh yeah, this is a can't miss. Know. I mean, I, this is this is the pinnacle of the of Eagles or the Eagles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I slipped. Uh, th- this was the high point, and and it is recognized again in in the in the in the halls of of fame of of rock albums is Hotel California. And and the, it's got the classic and iconic album cover, which was designed by Kosh, who who yeah. did who worked did a lot of work with ELO. So at the time, seventy six, he did New World Records. Seventy six, he did Hotel California. Uh, th- this was the, during that time when when the packaging, the artwork, and mm-hmm. the music it was all kind of symbiotic. Everything worked together with each other and to present to present the piece of art to the public. 
to, mm-hmm. to consume. And it was just, oh yeah, this album, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that it was recommended and I'm glad we, we took the time to, I'm glad I took the time to deep dive it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I've never tired of it. I, um, you know, anytime I hear the title track on the radio, yeah, I'm probably going to change the station because, you know, it's just, you That's just hear it, one. you know, you yeah. hear, it's the one you hear it every day, but like, but when you, when you, I'm all, I always listen to it from beginning to end. I, I'm, I would never fast forward any song off this record or, you know, pick up the needle or put it, you know, whatever. I just, you have to listen to the entire thing. It's just, yeah. you know, it's just one of those. Yeah, it's one of those ones that there. has a feeling it, it kind of get, it kind of, it, 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 it's a complete thought. It's not just a collection of songs, although outwardly it, it may feel like that, but it's, it's not, it, it's got this kind of, I, I can't, you could probably put it in better words, but it, it's, it's melancholy. It's, it's harder edged. It's a little cynical. It's got, yeah, some, it's it, got some, some bright points, but it's, it speaks it's, to a lot of things happening yeah. at that point in time. It, it, it talks about loss. It talks about excess. It talks about, uh, you know, the, yeah, the state of America at the time, goes back a little ways, you know, like last resort goes back and, you know, we're talking about the decline of something that Henley would, you know, would go on to do, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, Fry, you know, coming in with, you know, what is new kid in town about? I mean, I, 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 that's the one song that kind of leaves me scratching my head. (laughs) I don't really know what that song's about, but it fits in there. I mean, it definitely, yeah. there's, 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 it's, it's, it's thematically dense. It has a lot of stuff. It's, it's saying a lot. Yeah. And, and just the, the arrangement period. and the production yeah. of it too, just adds to it. It's not, it's, yeah. it's no throwaway. It, it fits and it brings something, it brings something different to, to what Henley was doing, which you need that, you need that counter punch and you need that contrast too. Cause then it can, it can kind of, it can kind of drag you. So if you don't have, some of the, some, you know, some of these songs vacillating in between and giving you different things. Mm-hmm. You don't want an album full of wasted time and last right. resort. You know, it, it, that's it, right. Those, those songs are much more impactful when they have other things contrasted near it. Absolutely. And then you can really yeah. kind of absorb it and, and get taken in as opposed to like one thing after another like that. So there, there's room, you know, in the Eagles, there was room for everybody. That's right. Until, <laughs> until they would put out their last album, which would be the long run. Yeah. In 1980, which would take two years to record, yeah, things had just started to just to fall apart. Too many, too many cooks at, at that point. You know, too the many, famous it, had it. Had I think Henley put it. I think it was. I think Henley said it was too many chiefs. Yeah, not enough Braves. Too or, many chiefs. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And, and you know, things were. You know, Glenn Fry and Don Felder were, were feuding. The the famous story is, is like one show in in, in 1980. Literally, Glenn Fry saying on stage to Don Felder, like, you know, three more songs until I kick your ass. Like, once we get off the stage, <laughs> and, you know, and uh, really like and you can see him like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to kick like, your ass when we get off the stage. I mean, this is like on, on stage. He's like he's like, yeah, like getting himself wound up to beat the crap out of Don Felder. As soon as they as, like, yeah. that's how bad it got. And then Glenn Fry would end up end up leaving the Eagles. He would be like, I'm done. That's it. They still owed an album, a, a live album, which they were able to put out. And they did that not near each other, you know, tapes were being sent cross country at the time. It wasn't digital. So I think Don, I think Glenn Fry was in Miami at the time. So that stuff was kind of going back and forth. And then that, yeah, that, that toxic, that toxicity that kind of festered Mm -hmm. uh, just exploded at the end and they just could, could not be around each other. They finished out their, their commitment to, to the record label. And basically where, where it comes in in the nineties is, is they were, you know, people were asked, Hey, they would ask Don Henley or whoever, were you going to get to back together again? And they'd be like, well, when hell, hell freeze is over. Yeah. Which would be the name of their reunion. That's <laughs> hell right. Hell freeze is over. Cause it did. They, they came back quite successfully. Yeah. That was, a, that was a hell of a show. I mean, I remember that album. Yeah. I remember that MTV special. It oh was, yeah. It was fantastic. I mean, and they were in such fine form and it was everybody. I, it was yeah. the, it was the last lineup. I'm sorry, we didn't mention Timothy B. Schmidt. So so after uh, Randy Meisner left, after he was Hotel replaced by who hailed from Poco. Yeah, he re- he actually yeah. replaced Randy Meisner in Poco. So now he's replacing him in in Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would come in. Uh, he would be on the long run. He would have that song. I can't tell you why. So he he even even slid in for one album and got got a chart got hit a hit as well. That's yeah, right. Yeah, one, one one album, one hit, <laughs> one hit. <laughs> yeah. So so they they they. Uh, reformed the last version of Eagles for for Hell Freezes Over. So no Bernie Led, no no Randy Meisner. Yeah, um, and it was man. it was quite successful. 
It was. I remember. I, mean, I remember when that when it opened with the, the acoustic version of Hotel, which I not many people favor. Of course, I mean you can't really compare the two, but I love it. I thought it was. I thought it was fantastic the way they, you know, the way they did it. Because to me, like just having having them sit at the edge of the stage and those voices just carrying the song. It's not the guitars in this at this point. It's the voices, it's the harmonies yeah. that really drove it, and and that's 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 who they are. That's what you know. That's yeah. They really kind of did meal. it unplugged. Exactly was, was how yeah. they did it, and, and right. really kind of showed that they they had the chops, and they they can't you know they weren't a uh, a geriatric tour. They came ready to deliver. <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. You know, they they debuted a couple of new songs. Love will keep us alive. Yeah. So th- so they had they had new material and were able to celebrate the old stuff. And then in between, you know, Don Henley had a massive solo career. Glenn Fry had a, a, a good career too, but he was known more for his, his soundtrack work were, were yeah. always the hit singles. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you, part of me, part of you from Thelma and Louise, the heat is on, on from, from Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills Cop. Cop. I mean, he, yeah, he yeah. did like a lot of soundtrack songs that got, that got really big and became hits. And then you he, belong of to the city, Miami vice, which Miami vice. also appeared in, in an episode, which smugglers is our, blues. That's, that's our favorite, <laughs> which was a, which, which they ended up making a, an episode of Miami vice that was based on that. Right. That's where that came on, from based on the song. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He did some acting too. Glenn Fry went on, he oh. was in Jerry Maguire. He was in, uh, let's get Harry. Yeah. He played. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, oh, Gary my God, and, and, oh my God. And I forgot Robert about Duvall? that one. Oh my God. Oh, I love that movie. Man. I, I forgot all about that How could one. Could you forget about that? Mark Holy. Harmon. <laughs> Holy shit. I Tom forgot. Wilson. He played Biff in, in Back to the Future. That's it, right. it, you can't find this, people. You cannot find this film anywhere. But if you ever do see a movie oh, called Let's Get that's Harry. Right. That's right. Yeah. It's, oh, man. it's a really good film. And, and Don Henley was like the you know the coke sniffing buddy and they you know Glenn Fry. Glenn Fry. I mean Glenn Fry. Yeah. <laughs> was the coke sniffing buddy and they go out someone gets kidnapped like in, in Costa Rica or wherever and they have to get his friend and they, they put together like a ragtag rescue team of Gary that- Busey. <laughs> He's like a car dealer. And then uh, they, they hire a mercenary. It's Robert Duvall. It was just a really good movie. It was typical yeah. 80s fodder. Action was, fodder. Exactly. I mean, it's a really bad movie, but really good in our, you know, yeah. like Glenn really was good, in wise guy. Movie. He was in that, yeah. he was in that TV show. Wise guy too. That's right. Yep. So he yeah, did. He yeah. He did it. Yeah, he and I might add, he was looking pretty, pretty damn good at that point. Like, you know, when you see him when, in, in the seventies, he's got the long hair. He looks like pretty much high off his ass the whole <laughs> movie, most of the time, you know. But he really kind of cleaned himself up. He was like yeah. with the short hair. He's like he got, you know, he got buff and he was tan and it's, taking it's, care it's, of himself. It's taking care of himself, but it's really a shame how you know that he unfortunately he's no longer with us. Yeah, so it's, yeah, you know, it was, it was terrible now. And now his that was that was a that was a shocker for me that yeah. day when I heard that he oh my God. I, I was I was devastated I was like Rick Glenn Fry of all sad, people like sad day when we lost him yeah it was just absolutely like, you know, yeah really kind of going in for surgery it was kind of like the Bill Paxton thing going in for surgery and then complications and then you pass away it's just that's right those are like kind of really almost seems like uh, so random you know and, and yeah. really should have happened but who knows uh, did did I ever tell you I met Don Henley yeah it was at the mall. Yeah. Galleria. I was supposed to go, but I couldn't. 1991. Yeah, that's right. He, he, was... he had a, he had a, a, there was a collection of essays called heaven is below our feet for Walden Wood. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was doing a book signing. So I kind of got online and waited and got up to the thing, got up to meet him. And he's, you know, this is kind of like, well, what do you want me to write? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I said, right. I, I said, if you could write, um, kind of bent, but we ain't breaking. And he kind of looked at me. Excellent. Yeah, he was kind. He kind of like looked up, like, oh wow, okay. So he he wrote it. I have. I still have the book. Well, that's fantastic. He, date, he dated it and he wrote. He wrote I would that. Hope to you Dean would still and... have the book. I'd probably kick your ass if you didn't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like really, <laughs> Henley. So yeah. So I, I hung on to the book, but but yeah, yeah. Henley had a, a really prolific uh, solo career. I mean, he, he out at, started off a little light with uh, with Can't Stand Still. Yeah, but then he he had uh, building the perfect beast, which had building. Boys of Summer and Sunset oh my Grill, God, that's, that's and, and my, all she wants to do is dance. Love that album. Um, and love then it. he str- then he hit it big with End of the Innocence, which was like his yeah. big album, a, a little actually, more poppy. You know, I actually like Building the Perfect Beast better. I think yeah. I prefer that record. I love. Yeah, there's so many. And there's, Sunset Grill. I love that. Uh, that song. Uh, and it's so experimental too. Like yeah. he's experimenting with synthesizers on that song. I remember. <laughs> I remember I was listening and again, there's the song, right? There's the one, two punch of the song 
right before Sunset Grill. It's like a little ballad and it's talking about, you know, farmers and, you know, losing the land and all this kind of thing and really sad, melancholy type song. And it, and it just kind of fades right into Sunset Grill with that buildup of the of the Damn. percussion and then and then the synthesizers kick in and i'm and it's like it, it gets like really loud and i had it blasting because i because I, I just love the song <laughs> my dad comes into the kitchen he's like what the hell happened to music <laughs> like what the hell is that what is that i'm like it's don henley from from eagles the eagles you know he's like i don't know who these people are and i'm like oh my god you know so you know but yeah because it, it, he wouldn't have said that if it had been like you know one of one of their songs, but before, yeah. because it was the eighties, with yeah, that it had a different you know, sound, of course, you know. And, so and he was trying something different. He had Patty Smythe on that album and, and on, Lindsay, on Sunset Lindsay Grill, she, you can really hear her. Yeah, he that was really kind of a, a leap forward for him. Danny uh, Korchmar, who uh, who was the uh, guitarist with James Taylor, you know, he collaborated, I think, on a lot of the songs. I think he yeah, was kind yeah, of yeah, like he, the, he brought out the, the right hand stars, man, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and Glenn Fry kind of tried it along. One of my f- favorite albums though is the All Nighter from Glenn Fry. I yes. love that album. That's oh, right. Oh my god, yep. such yep. a great album. Yep. Because you just get you get Glenn Fry. He gets he gets to get caught up, you know, from having one or two songs per album. Uh, he gets to get caught up, and and it, that was his second solo album. So if you check out the All Nighter, that's a really good. One. It's got Smuggler's Blues on it, mm-hmm. and but sexy it's got a lot, girl. Of, it's a lot of yeah, sexy girl, a lot of yeah. other stuff. Let's yeah. go home. There's just yeah. so many. Uh, was it I got love? Yeah. So yeah, a lot of great stuff. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's good. They, they were kind of both being prolific and going out there, and then Joe Walsh was was doing his thing. One he of my you know, favorite, the Confessor. He never stopped. I mean, yeah, he, he was out there right too, in, right back into his 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 thing, his solo. Yeah, thing. he he had a solo. He had oh. a solo career during this. I mean, he put out a solo album after That's right. after Hotel California. So he was still kind of going on doing his own thing and then doing Eagles as well. Like he didn't really miss a step. Actually, he kind of just you kind almost, of you almost could going. say that he was a glorified special guest in the yeah. band. You know, maybe I don't know if he was truly at at that point treated like an equal. I think they used used him to the best, you know, they <laughs> kind of just, yeah, you know, we will take it, you know, whatever. But I don't think that he got really any kind of real, real say until now. Nowadays, I think he has a, a really kind of more of an equal partnership yeah. when they reconvened in the 90s. But even more so now that, well, now that Fry is, is, is gone because they're still touring or at least trying to because of the pandemic they guess they you know they can't really do yeah much, so but. they they were gonna that would for me would have spelled the end it's kind of like okay what you know Glenn what, what do you do what do you do i mean that's <laughs> like that's like that's like lennon and mccartney like it's you know, that's right you know, yeah you know it's, it's kind of hard um and they came up their idea i think jackson brown sat in for a little bit which which was is a fine replacement because he was he was pretty much an honorary eagle if as well. Any, right, if there's anybody who deserves to be there, yeah. it's him. Or, it should or, be Jackson or, Brown. So that, yeah. but then what they came up with is um, Glenn Fry's son, Deacon Fry, mm-hmm. and they also added Vince Gill. Yeah. So they actually add they they pulled the Fleetwood Mac. They had to add two members to replace Glenn Fry. So Deacon Fry c- came in. Uh, and Vince Gill, who's got a great, fantastic voice. Yeah, I mean, Vince Gill is no, is no slouch. I mean, it's, that's, yeah. that's a great choice, but. I mean, again, it's one of those things where he's, he doesn't need to be an Eagles. You know, yeah. he's got his own, his own thing, his own career, which he's extremely popular. I mean, he's not, you know, he's, he didn't kind of fade away. He's still, I think he's pretty much still going and he's done some incredible work. I mean, that, that one, what was that one box set that he put out? Like, it was like, I think it had like 70 songs on it or something oh, really? like that. Of who, Vince Gill? Vince Gill, like this God. massive, this massive work that he did. Like <laughs> it was like, and it wasn't a compilation. If I recall, I think it was like wow. all original material, but it was like, I guess he had like had all these songs like over the years, like, yeah. uh, you know, and he just released this massive thing. Yeah. And, not not you know, to get too but, far off with Vince Gill. What I yeah. didn't know about Vince, Vince Gill is he was in uh, pure, pure, pure Prairie League. Oh, really? That song, like that song, Let Me Love You Tonight. That's Vince Gill. Oh my God. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either until like relatively recently. I'm like, (laughs) why you go down the YouTube rabbit hole and this is where you end up. You end up finding out that Vince Gill was in pure Prairie league and saying, let me love you tonight. That's right. (laughs) That's how you learn folks. If you want to, if you want to be a geek like us, sit in front of the computer, watch YouTube. That's right. (laughs) Yep. Oh boy. So yeah. So, so the Eagles did, they're they're still an active, uh, business concern now don felder is no longer with no longer with them there was a lot of lawsuits and animosity so you can't have reunions without acrimony 
in this mm -hmm. day and age and having a, a dissatisfied party, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but you got Joe Walsh, you got Don Henley, you got Timothy B. Schmidt. So you have a decent amount of, of the Eagles there and then supplemented by Deacon Fry and, uh, and Vince Gill. So wrapping this up, I don't know what we can say ab about this album. Uh, this, this should be in everybody's collection. If you're, if you're a casual rock listener, this is one that should be there. Then you should absolutely have this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is. I mean, I'm, I can't imagine anybody not, have, or at least have heard it at some point in their lives. I mean, it's just, I mean, a lot of young folks out there, I, I, I highly recommend it. It, it definitely holds up. It's, um, Again, it, I mean, it speaks to a certain period of time, so perhaps maybe that might make it a little dated in, this, in certain certain circles. But um, but I think overall, it's just a wonderful wonderful stuff. And yeah. the band itself, I mean, just the, the whole legacy of that band is just just fantastic. So yeah, many it's songs. it's not like this was the yeah. standout in in like right, a right. a crowd of nobodies. Their other albums are just as strong. So if you That's go to right. one of these nights or on the border, yeah long run so this was not like oh this was their one this was their biggest one but they had pl plenty of big ones before and after too yeah i would so say they're, they're no mean, slouch but this is good this is the pinnacle yeah this one this album i would say probably the best only because it's uh, every song maybe not quite the same on, on a on a few of their others but so many hits though i mean like yeah. those hits really carry those albums and and with this one though it's really it's it's the first album where it just every song feels could have been a hit and it just, you know, yeah. They yeah. These there, songs have weight to them. They've got, they've got, they've absolutely. got something there. That's what yeah, it because is. Because so. like I said, like we said before, it's so thematically strong, but it's, yeah, it's great stuff. That's going to do it for this episode of the 3324 podcast. We appreciate you checking us out. We are available on social media. We do live shows on Facebook. We have a blast. I encourage mm -hmm. you. If you, if you're not a Facebook person, that's fine. Join just to join us. And jo join just to go on our live shows. If, if yeah. for no other reason, you will have a great time. We, we, we guarantee it. Well, we almost guarantee it, but we have a blast there. So definitely check us out there, social media. New episodes every Thursday uh, are quick hits, or which is new content that comes out every Monday. So we've got all the bases covered. We've got you for, for soup to nuts for, for your music and movie content. So for Eric, this has been Dean. We thank you for listening, and we will see you on the flip side. You've been listening to the 3324 Podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 